Our ancient ancestors relied on sundials to help them tell the time. There was an obvious problem with that. Telling the time was easy during the day, but a little harder at night. That's why somebody invented the clock. It would have been enough just to have the clock face and some hands to tell the time with. But some designers have gone a lot further than that. Some clocks and timepieces, especially grand old astronomical clocks, would be more accurately described as works of art. And in this video, we're going to look at some of the most beautiful examples of clock craftsmanship in the world. It took a few attempts to arrive at what we now recognize as the optimum design for a watch. While we currently recognize a watch as something that should fit around a wrist, in years past, watches belonged in your pocket. And that's only if you could find a way to make them fit. The oldest watch in the world evolved from spring-driven clocks. And what you're looking at now is the earliest known surviving example. Correctly called a spherical table watch, it's better known to historians as Melanchthon's watch after its owner Philip Melanchthon and can be dated by an engraving on its back to the year 1530. Sadly, it lacks in a watchmaker's mark, but it was likely made in Nuremberg, Germany. Delightfully, the spherical watches which were made in Nuremberg are sometimes called Nuremberg eggs. Melanchthon probably had the watch made especially for him by commission, with customized perforations in the case which allowed him to check the time without having to open it. He probably paid a fortune for it, as one of the founders of Lutheranism, he was a man of means. There are a few clocks which claim to be the oldest in the world, but the Salisbury Cathedral clock in England might have the best case to claim that honor. There's just one drawback to it. It doesn't have a dial. The iron clock consists of a pendulum, a foilet, and a verge, along with a striking train. Those who lived around the clock back when it was mounted in its tower may not have been able to look at it to tell the time, but they would always have had a reasonable idea of how far through the day they were because it would strike a bell on the hour every hour. It's so old that it isn't even held together with nuts and bolts. They hadn't been invented back in 1386. Instead of the standard arrangement, its frame was held together by metal tenons. It was never truly intended to give an accurate time. Its most important function would be to chime when Mass was about to begin, as a reminder for the locals to get into the cathedral in time for prayer. The story behind the astronomical clock of Prague is so unbelievable that it could pass for a fairy tale. Its real past is shrouded in mystery, but the stories say it was designed and built by Mikulas of Caden during the 14th century. After he finished his work, the Council of Prague is said to have arranged for him to be blinded so he couldn't build a bigger clock elsewhere. As an act of vengeance, Mikulas sabotaged the clock by throwing himself into the mechanism, costing himself his own life in the process of destroying his greatest work. After that, the clock was said to be cursed, and so other clockmakers were reluctant to repair it. Someone must have eventually agreed to the job because it's still in operation to this day. Nicolas was an eccentric, which might explain why the clock displays old Bohemian time and Babylonian time, as well as the local time in the Czech Republic. There's now a replica of this clock in South Korea, although it lacks some of the charms of the original. The Salisbury Cathedral clock may be the oldest in the world, but the oldest clock face in the world can be found at Wells Cathedral, which is also in England. It's been keeping time since 1392, and until 1882, it was still running on its original mechanism. That mechanism is still in full working order today, but it's been installed in a museum. Since 2010, the clock has been electronically powered, but only because the family who'd serviced it for generations eventually retired. Paul Fisher was the final physical custodian of the clock, a job which involved climbing the 50 steps to the clock twice a week and winding the mechanism up and had been held by his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather before him. The ornate clock has some interesting decorations, including a jousting set of knights and Saracens who do battle around the face of the clock 24 hours a day. The Fisher family have committed to returning to their duties if a power cut ever makes the new electric motor inoperable. The English don't have a monopoly on beautiful old clocks. The French have always had a flair for art, 
and it's demonstrated in the construction of the Gros Horlon in Rune. The name translates into English as the Great Clock, which is a clue to how the people of France feel about it. Like the clock in Prague we looked at, this is an astronomical clock and dates back to the 14th century. In its early years, it didn't even have a dial. One revolution of the clock's singular hand signified that 24 hours had passed, and everything in between was guesswork for the people gazing upon it. It gained its dial in 1592, and was then mostly left unchanged until the mid-1920s, when an electric motor was added. The clock's facade is a Renaissance piece, depicting the sun against a background of stars. It's there for more than decoration, though. It also accurately tracks the phases of the moon. As well as being a work of art, it's also featured in the paintings of some of the world's finest ever painters, including Turner and Le Martyr. No great European city was complete without an astronomical clock during the 14th and 15th centuries, and Strasbourg had no intention of being left out of the fun, so they had one of their own made. That's not the one you'll see there today, though. Although it has many designs attributed in common with its predecessors, the current Strasbourg astronomical clock is the third of its type to have stood there since the late 1300s. Very few records of the original exist, although the written testimonies of the time say that it had a giant clockwork rooster as part of its ornamentation, and it scared off birds. This third and perhaps most impressive clock has stood since 1843. As you can see from these images, it has an ornamental rooster of its own, as well as a fully operational planetary calendar, as if that weren't enough. There's also a huge globe in front of the clock, which ensures that the position of the stars is always shown correctly all year, every year. That's no small achievement for a clock that's over 150 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the Elephant Clock. This unusual timekeeping device came from the mind of Al-Jazari, an outstanding Islamic scholar and engineer of the 13th century. He was centuries ahead of his time as an inventor, and that's clearly demonstrated by the genius of his elephant clock invention. In completing this 22-foot tall animal-inspired timekeeping device, Al-Jazari was inspired by the Han Chinese clocks of the era, and works on a system of weights and water. Inside the top half of the element is the entire mechanism, which would make a noise every half an hour to confirm the passing of time. The rest of the giant structure is purely for decoration. The system works by draining water through a hole in the middle of a bucket. When the bucket is drained, it pulls on a string, which sets off a chain reaction, resulting in a ball which falls out of the mouth of an ornamental serpent to symbolize that an hour has passed. It seems needlessly intricate, but it's undoubtedly ingenious. The original clock is sadly no longer with us, but several later reproductions exist. We've seen astronomical clocks in Prague and Strasbourg. Now here's one in Lübeck, Germany. The designers of this take on the astronomical design, which is part of St. Mary's Church in the city, wanted to make sure that people would be able to see and hear it for miles around. The face is two stories high. As is usually the case with astronomical clocks, this stunning structure displays the date, the positions of the zodiac, and the time. You can also use it to check the progress of all known local celestial bodies through the sky. The only thing it's lacking is the historical importance of the other clocks. This is almost a baby, having been built during the 1960s. At noon each day a series of sculptures of people, each representing a different ethnicity passes before a statue of Christ, who confers blessings upon them. Worryingly for those who enjoy a good doomsday prophecy, the clock's internal calendar abruptly runs out of days during 2080. Perhaps there was something the designer knew which we don't. Astronomical clocks were incredible works of engineering, but it was possible to build one to scale without needing something as huge as Cathedral Clock Tower to house it in. Italian genius Giovanni Dondi del Orologio showed the world how in the mid-1300s, and we can't help but think he was showing off a little with his Astrarium Clock. Made of over 100 moving parts, the Astrarium featured a whole seven faces and 
track the movements of five planets as well as the Sun and Moon. It also ensured you never missed a holy feast day by reminding you when they would occur, too. It's generally thought that Astrarium was one of, if not the, first mechanical clocks made in Europe. In the written records of Del Orologio's time, it's shown that his peers considered it to be a work almost beyond human capability, and the finest of all of his achievements. Incredibly, despite its extraordinary complexity, the device didn't contain a single screw. Astrarium was built by hand using pins and wedges. Tragically, the ultimate fate of the clock is unknown, having disappeared from the annals of history somewhere around 1485. Bern in Switzerland is home to yet another remarkable astronomical clock, but almost as impressive as the 16th century clock is the medieval tower which houses it, which is called Zietgloga. For 800 years, Zietgloga has been one of the most recognizable buildings in all of Switzerland and has served as a prison, a clock tower, a guard tower, and a civic memorial during its long life, as well as surviving fire and war. The clock in its current condition is somewhat refurbished, but is mainly faithful to the original designs of Caspar Brunner, who installed it in the 1520s. It comes in the shape of an astrolabe, with three shades of blue depicting different stages of the day and night. There's so much going on with the clock that it's almost impossible to tell the time because of all the distractions. There's a reet which represents the zodiac and also contains a dial for the Julian calendar, a moon dial which loops around the zodiac and charts the stages of the moon, and two suns which also travel around on loops and synchronize with sunrise and sunset. The astronomical clock of Lyon, France has something about it that marks it out as being different from all the other clocks. And it's not just the fact that it's picked out in delicate gold leaves. This clock, which in the Cathedral St. Jean, has rudimentary sound effects. Every time the hourglass in the angel's hand turns over, a metal rooster will crow, and bells ring throughout the cathedral. It's a little eerie to see and hear now, so we hate to think what people made of it back in the 1300s. Work on the clock started in 1383, but a religious war in France during the 1500s saw it almost destroyed. It wasn't until 1661 until someone got around to making it work again, and much of the current appearance is probably owed to that 1661 refurbishment project. It used to be even more decorative than it is now, but all of its numerous references to French royalty were removed following the French Revolution. Every 66 years, someone has to come and reset the internal calendar, which cannot go beyond that time period. It was last done in 1954, which means it'll be happening again this year. It would be remiss of us to create a video based on stylish clocks and not pay at least one trip to Italy. For that reason, let's feast our eyes on the breathtaking wonder of the Tor del Orologio in beautiful Venice, which has stood since 1496. It's as beautiful today as it was on the day it was unveiled. Legend has it that creator Maurizio Codusi was blinded after the unveiling so he couldn't replicate the feat. And if you've been paying attention so far, you'll know that story sounds very familiar. For many years, the keepers of the clock lived inside the tower, so there was always someone to maintain it when needed. You can walk around their old lodgings on organized tours today. 400 years after it was unveiled, it made history again in 1858 when it became one of the first clocks in the world to wear a digital display. Although it's been heavily refurbished and replaced over the years, the bell that rings inside it is the original. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!